I'm Shannon Martin. Tonight, a community comes together after a fire tears through a local landmark. It was terrifying and it was really sad. Like, this place is like a little gold mine. Five fire crews did their best to battle the blaze. How residents are rallying to support the neighborhood meeting place. It's nice to have a special place where we can all go and sort of celebrate together. A weekend of festivals, many back in person for the first time in two years. We'll bring you highlights from across the city. I'm incredibly honored that that happened. Tomorrow is Emancipation Day. We'll hear from the Toronto woman who worked for decades to get the day designated across the country. This is CBC Late Night News. A local landmark near Cambridge is being remembered tonight with fond memories after it caught fire this weekend. The Old Marina restaurant was a place where people got together. It hosted weddings and welcomed visitors from across the country. Clara Pasica was there this evening talking to residents about the loss. Firefighters from at least five municipalities battled a huge blaze that engulfed the Old Marina restaurant for an entire day, with reoccurring bursts of smoke and flames even into this evening. But in the end, there was nothing crews could do to save it. Flames broke out around lunchtime Saturday. No injuries were reported. Wendy Walker Bradley, who ate there almost every Friday, says it was a staple for the community. It's the only restaurant, often hosting everything from birthdays to weddings. It was terrifying and it was really sad. Like, this place is like a little gold mine. This, you can't even get in here from cars being parked here every day. Lunch, dinner, full, full house. Walker Bradley says she and her husband watched truck after truck trying to put out the blaze. We were all very, very devastated, very sad, because it looked like it was, it, was, it was under control. And then all of a sudden the flames just started coming out. Like, it was like there's no way this is being saved, right? Longtime resident John Major also saw the fire. As we sat on our deck and we watched it all unfolding, the just smoke got more intense and intense. And it, we, we watched it burn through the size of the building and then it became fully engulfed and it was just out of control. The mayor says the restaurant has been around for about 100 years and has drawn visitors from across the country. She says the economic impact will be huge. We also know that it has provided great work for a number of different people in the area and I know that our hearts go out to the owners, our hearts go out to the staff who could do nothing but stand by and watch this building burn to the ground. The economic impact goes beyond this restaurant and the township of Puzzlint but our whole city of Cambridge and Waterloo region has had great economic benefit especially from tourists who come and have a lunch there and then go out and see other attractions or stay in the nearby hotels. Leonardo Jimenez, who had reservations for this weekend and important memories here, says he'll be donating. I'm hoping they'll get back on their feet. The community is already coming together to support the restaurant owner and the staff who worked here who will now be out of work. This is actually the second time that the old marina restaurant burnt down. It burnt down before in the 2000s. The community came together then to see that the restaurant was rebuilt and many are hoping that the same can happen this time. As to what caused the fire, Cambridge Fire is still investigating. Clara Pasika, CBC News, Pooseless, Ontario. In Toronto, one man is dead after falling off a boat near Ontario Place. It took two hours for rescue crews to find him. Police say they received reports of a man falling into Lake Ontario and drowning around 2.40 this afternoon. About two hours later, Toronto Fire say they found a man, began performing CPR. There are no details tonight on his name or age. And in Scarborough, a motorcyclist is dead after an early morning crash. Police say the man was thrown from his bike after he somehow collided with a car. It happened near Kennedy and Eglinton. Just after one this morning, the man was taken to hospital where he died. Police are asking any witnesses to come forward. And in other news, it is a weekend of festivals right across the city. We'll take you to a few for some of the highlights. We start, though, at Block Obana, celebration for black LGBTQ communities. Meg Roberts takes us there. The glitz and the glamour of yesterday's Grand Parade is sticking around for another day. 
Described as the Caribbean carnival for the LGBTQ community, Block Obana is back this year in person. Queer people have been at Caravana for years. We've always been there playing mass, doing all these sorts of things. But it's nice to have a special place where we can all go and sort of celebrate together as a community, knowing that there will be no issues um, around uh, homophobia, anti-black racism, transphobia, and all those sorts of things. This is the 12th year of the event. It was organized to give an inclusive space to those who might not feel comfortable amidst a largely straight crowd at the carnival, as well as an event for black LGBTQ artists and DJs to showcase their talents. LGBTQ DJs like Michelle Asari, known as Cookie Dough. 12 years ago, there was probably only one place that we could play for one weekend. And now every weekend, every month, every year, there's something going on bigger and better. The organizer says the event has grown tenfold in numbers, going from about 100 people in the first year to over 1,000 attendees now. So as we go every year, we're just getting more and more and more. So I'm really hoping this year we blow it out of the park. Adrian Brown and Karan Prender guests live in the USA and came here for yesterday's parade. They say they felt comfortable at Caribbean Carnival, but some might not have. It's very important to have events like this so people can come out and be themselves and feel great and just be open. Block Obana wraps up ahead of Emancipation Day, which will be celebrated tomorrow. Meg Roberts, CBC News, Toronto. There have been celebrations all month long for the 55th Toronto Caribbean Carnival with the Grand Parade yesterday. A final event scheduled for today was called off and postponed until August. According to organizers, the event called Carnival Flavors is rescheduled in order to celebrate Trinidad and Tobago's 60th independence. The new date set for August 27th and 28th at Young Dundas Square. It will be open to the public. Organizers say if you had tickets, you can get a refund. And in North York, the 10th anniversary of Ghana Fest. We're here celebrating Ghanaian arts and culture, our food, our music, our people, celebrating and giving people a taste of Ghana. It also serves as a diaspora call to the rest of the community out there. Ghana Fest is being hosted by Ghanaians, but we're inviting everybody else to come out and enjoy with us. There was food, music, and games for the kids. Dozens attending Earl Bales Park to celebrate the West African country and its culture. A perfect sunny and warm day to gather and celebrate outdoors. And we're welcoming back Matt Hamill again with us tonight. And really, what a lovely weekend for you to be with us because it's sunshine and warmth. Yeah, nice to see you, Shannon. I feel like I'm making a good introduction to your viewers, bringing such a nice forecast. Although, as we look ahead coming out of this long weekend, uh, possibly tomorrow, a bit of thunderstorm activity hitting the GTA in the evening. So kind of flipping the script a little bit here. We can see that reflected. Now, that's not to say that Monday morning, tomorrow morning and afternoon, we might not have some sunshine. It could be nice then. But yes, the evening hours, and we see how this storm is really uh, spanned across Ontario. We see quite a large area of the province, even parts of Quebec under that storm risk. So then as we look ahead to how this is timing out, southwestern Ontario, seeing that precipitation move through in the afternoon. But then, yes, as we get to 7, 8, 9 p.m., that's when it appears the GTA is under that storm risk, which doesn't bode well for Drake's Hip Hop Music Festival, OVO Fest. Uh, yes, we could see uh, some of that stormy activity right around the time Drake taking the stage. So we will keep a close eye on that. And if anything changes, we'll be monitoring that situation. Now, that's not the only precipitation event forecasted for the GTA this week. It does look like Toronto could see some storms by Thursday, an 80% chance of precipitation, maybe even some more showers heading into the weekend as well. And it's been quite dry, so maybe we'd be welcoming that precipitation to for our lawns. We'll be taking a look at that long range forecast a bit later in the show. Okay, thanks, Matt. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. We are tracking a series of extreme weather events right across the continent. First to growing wildfires on the West Coast. One year Penticton tripled in size this weekend, forcing people from their homes. Susanna De Silva is there. These snowblowers aren't getting ready for the ski season. They're getting ready to try and hold back this. We were setting up these uh, snow guns here. Uh, and we're going to create a massive humidity ball. Steve Portman is a volunteer firefighter, 40-year resident of the area, and works at the Apex Ski Resort southwest of Kelowna. Our lifts and our, our restaurant and bar, our ski shop, you know, if, uh, if this gets into here and we lose this infrastructure, we lose our, we lose our livelihood. So... 
The Karameas Creek wildfire started on Friday and quickly grew under the heat, heavy winds and difficult conditions. It is quite steep terrain that our crews are working in. Uh, so this has limited our ability to bring in the air tankers. They are also on standby if the fire moves into an area that is more actionable. Uh, we are also limited in our heavy equipment uh, use in this terrain. Local search and rescue crews were brought in to help get people out, while hundreds of others are on notice to leave at any moment. In nearby Penticton and Oliver, air quality alerts have been issued. This is one of only two significant fires burning in B.C. right now, with this year seeing far fewer than previous seasons. But as things get hotter and drier and the forest uh, goes under stress, uh, we are expecting that fires will happen. Uh, they will happen and grow more rapidly. Yeah, it's just, just, just right around the corner here. You can see, well, they, you can see the darker, darker smoke, so it's, I hate using this term, but shit's going to get real. For those already on alert like Portman, all they can do is try to prepare. i got to get my animals off the mountain, uh, some personal effects, and uh, then I'll be back at it. The weather is expected to get cooler this week, but the worry is that will likely bring wind, lightning, and very little rain. Susanna De Silva, CBC News, Vancouver. Okay, south of the border now to Kentucky next, where rescue efforts are underway after some of the worst flash flooding the state has ever seen. Officials say finding all the people missing could take weeks. Bridges are out, homes and buildings destroyed, and dozens of lives lost. Katie Simpson has our story. The devastation is overwhelming. In a part of the U.S. where people already struggle to make ends meet, entire communities have been ripped apart families destroyed. Four siblings are among the dead. A relative says they made it to the roof of their flooded home and tree branches for shelter until they were swept away from their parents. Survivors are just starting to process the magnitude of what they've lived through. I was grateful that my family made it out. I have a beautiful wife and four baby girls and uh, the 11 day old right now, she said, we're safe. Oh, we're good. Rescue efforts have been hampered by dangerous conditions, and it's been hard to account for residents because power and cell phone service is largely out. I wish we had a firm, real number of the people that are missing. Members of the National Guard boarded helicopters to survey the damage, assessing some of the hardest hit areas looking for survivors. But emergency crews couldn't get to everyone. A passerby stopped to help when he heard shouts from this flooded home. He banged on a window, not knowing that inside, a 98-year-old grandmother, May Ambergie, was trapped alongside her adult grandson and son. Everyone made it out alive, slowly moving across the water to safety. It's, it's devastating. This is probably the worst devastating I've ever seen. Less than 12 months ago, Kentucky was hit by another extreme weather event. More than 80 people were killed when a string of powerful tornadoes wiped out communities in the western part of the state. The governor says he needs more federal funding to prepare infrastructure for the kinds of conditions that come with climate change. We've got to make sure that uh, our roads, our bridges, our culverts, our flood walls uh, can withstand greater intensity. A different kind of challenge is now on the way. This region is expected to be hit by extreme heat. Without power for air conditioners and functioning water systems, the hot temperatures will be dangerous. Katie Simpson, CBC News, Washington. Emancipation Day is relevant because it's an opportunity for us to come together and heal. Tomorrow is Emancipation Day, a day to reflect, celebrate and educate. Free Up is a festival of arts and activism. It's also produced a two-part special program that broadcasts on CBC tomorrow night. The show features Canadian producers, entertainers and change makers. There's conversations and musical performances too. Getting the day officially designated in Canada took decades of hard work by one of the women you're about to meet, Rosemary Sadler. Here's more from her, plus Ngozi Paul, who started Free Up and is one of the people behind tomorrow night's program. I came involved with Free Up and the film uh, significantly because I am the person who worked on, who initiated and followed through since about 1994 on trying to have August 1st 
commemorated and I'm incredibly honored that that happened. Proud, um, I don't even know what the right word is because when you've been working on something for such a long time and then it finally happens, uh, you have a lot of mixed feelings, but let's say I'm working with joy at this moment in the 1600s when uh, the British Imperial Act finally took place and was passed and Britain got to speak to all of its colonies around the world. That meant that the slavery of all people, but significantly Africans in this country ended. It had been going on for over 200 years. So that's a 200 year bit of history that we have to also be mindful of. And that 200 years helped to inform the opportunities that people of African origin still find themselves challenged or denied um, because of preconceived notions. So in the joy that I think we need to have in celebrating that yes, chattel slavery ended, needs to also be the mindfulness that that joy and that opportunity to have freedom came at the price of 200 years of people being held in bondage. I had the experience with Emancipation Day that I really didn't know about Emancipation Day. Um, and I was flabbergasted. <laughs> and, um, and I wanted to have a conversation with my fellow artists about that. Um, and I know that in, in relationship to the notion of freedom, which even when we started doing Free Up five years ago, like the, the conversation has changed very much in texture, right? And I really do feel that the arts is an opportunity for us to, to not be afraid, to sort of sit at the table, to stand on the stage and, and reflect to the community the conversations that are most important to us. I wanted to make that space with, with Freedom Talks and really have an opportunity to go deeper. Rosemary, is a, she's a hero of mine. And I just, when you're like, what, you did what? Huh? And, you know, for decades, literally decades before it was on everybody's lips. So, um, so that's the part that Rosemary plays. It is the umbrella that holds all of this. We travel to different parts of the country and uh, celebrate with different communities. It's an art special. So you see great performances, dance, uh, singing, um, instrumental, some steel pan, <laughs> caravan of steel pan. And in the second episode, you see some really in-depth conversations about Emancipation Day, about what freedom means in, in the modern age. Um, and that's interwoven with some, also some stellar, stellar performance. In downtown Toronto today, Nathan Phillips Square was packed for the taste of India. When people come here, they're gonna expect a lot of aroma of good food cooking live. They're gonna see power pack performances on the stage back to back. It's spicy. Stuffed chilies, fried and stuffed. Um, we tried the chicken 65 and then the missile pa. And the momos, the momos are exceptional. A little glimpse of the reactions to all the different flavors at the festival. Organizers say it is the largest Indian food festival in North America. Along with dozens of vendors, there were live performances. The festival continues tomorrow. And that's not the only place you can grab some delicious food. In the beaches, a huge selection of food for the 8th annual Toronto Food Truck Festival. A spicy whole squid. Looks good, it looks delicious. <laughs> More than 40 food trucks with dishes from around the world filled Woodbine Park. The festival was organized in support of Sick Kids Hospital, music, food, and for all the adventurous foodies out there, some eating contests. The festival runs through the civic holiday, so there's still time to try out some of these exciting eats. If you weren't feeling peckish, I'm sure now you do after all that B-roll of food and everybody saying how delicious it is.
Oh, I'll try to focus on the weather, but Shannon, my mind is on food now, thanks to you guys over at CBC now. But we will talk about some weather here because it has been a marvelous long weekend, but tomorrow looks like a bit of a pattern flip. Could see some stormy activity in the afternoon for parts of southwestern Ontario and for the GTA, more so an evening storm threat. Now, it doesn't look like the whole day is going to be a wash. We are looking at that thunderstorm risk here for quite a large section of Ontario, even parts of Quebec, that severe storm risk, mostly for those southwestern parts of Ontario, not so much for the GTA. And then we can get a sense here. Uh, they some sunshine for the morning and afternoon in Toronto so you can probably get outside and enjoy some of those uh, wonderful food festivals we're seeing but then things uh, do clear up for Tuesday back to more sunny conditions now uh, we're looking at Monday not the only precipitation threat for Toronto we are seeing Thursday an 80% chance of precipitation 30 degrees with possible thunderstorms as well feeling probably pretty sticky on Thursday as well feeling like 40 and maybe some showers heading into the weekend so that's kind of beneficial moisture because it has been been quite dry. The month of July did not bring much precipitation, uh, just over half of the typical percentage we would see for the month of July. So the dry conditions, something we've seen over the past few months, and that has led to quite dry conditions. So we love the sunshine. We like that. But hey, maybe a bit of precipitation sprinkled throughout the forecast. Not so bad for our lawns. We have seen some uh, very scorched ground over the past little while. Now, uh, the month of August looking like starting off pretty warm for Toronto. We do have some temperatures reaching that 30 degree mark, upper 20s. The second week of August, we are looking at a temperature trend that may be a bit more to that seasonal mark. So we've been enjoying some great long weekend weather. Uh, we're now looking at a bit of warmer weather for the first week and then settling in to more of a seasonal trend. You know, we're due for some rain, so we'll take it. Thanks so much, Matt. Thank you, Shannon. Have a great night. That is our show for you tonight. Thank you so much for watching. You can stay caught up on news anytime on our website, cbcnews.ca. We hope you have a great night and a great Monday tomorrow.